Good morning, Kia. Good morning, Elaine. How's it going this morning? It's going well. I'm I'm liking the uh, the overcast just for change of pace. So, but uh, the day is going well so far. How about you? Pretty good. It it sure is starting good. to feel like fall, isn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. The weather matches with the leaves turning. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I want to welcome everyone to 10 Minutes with 52. My name is Elaine Shea. I'm the Community Engagement Manager. 52 is a creative and tech staffing agency. Um, we have been locally owned and operated for close to 15 years. Um, and 10 Minutes with 52 was really developed in an effort to help our community um, during this time and even, you know, out of this time because people are constantly looking for other career choices. They're looking to grow in their careers. Um, and this particular topic that Kia is going to address today, I think is very, very relevant, career pivoting. Um, Kia is a life and career coach. She is an amazing individual um, who is going to share with us today three things that people should think about when they're talking about career pivoting. So thank you so much, Kia, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So uh, I'm very, very excited to talk about this. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about career pivoting and how it's trending right now. So why, why do you think making a career pivot is so relevant right now? Why do you think people are, why it's so top of mind? Yeah, you know, it's really um, the effects of COVID because this time has really, for the last, what, seven to eight months that we've been in this, um, it has really caused us to kind of strip away all the things that we've been using to distract ourselves, all the things that we've been using to um, numb ourselves. It's like, oh, no, I got to I gotta go to work or I need to dive into this or no, I have to go to this meeting. And because the vast majority of us have been able to work from home, um, you know, we're, we're blessed in that way. And, you know, and then all the other things that have been happening at home, school has been happening at home, you're entertaining at home, you're doing everything at home, and the opportunities to distract ourselves have gone away. And so now you're just kind of faced with what's left and what I have been learning and hearing from people that I'm speaking with, clients that I have, everyone is, not everyone, but many people are noticing that oh, I can't run away from these things anymore. Like now I'm getting really clear because I can't look at anything else. I'm getting really clear on what isn't working for me anymore. And, you know, this career that I've been like force fitting myself into um, really doesn't fit with my values anymore. It doesn't fit with my lifestyle anymore. And so now there is a lot of conversation and questions about, well, if I were going to pivot, what should I do? How should I do it? Um, or I don't even know what to do. I just know that uh, this isn't working for me. So that is, um, those are some of the thematics that are coming up quite a bit more now as a result of COVID. So you mentioned um, the different types of career pivots. Mm -hmm. what, what, in your opinion, what types of career pivots are there? Really, I categorize pivots in two ways. One is a highway change. The other is a lane change. The highway change is the big shift. Like you want to go in a completely different direction. You don't want to do anything that's similar or in the same um, realm of what you've been doing right now. You know, for me, I made a highway pivot. I made, I went from being a marketing executive to being a career and life coach and professional speaker. But there might be some people who just want to do a lane change. And that is you are shifting into a job or onto a path that is related in some way to what you've been doing, what you've been trained on, what you have experience in, experience in to this point. So using my career path as an example. So I've been in marketing my, my career, but if I wanted to do a lane change, maybe I would want to shift from being a marketing director 
to maybe being a communications consultant or a PR manager. So they're related, but they're not the same exact discipline. So that would, that would constitute being a lane change. So those are really, that's how I break it down um, that helps people, most people to understand what direction they want to go in. I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, I think for most people, the hardest is that highway change, right? Completely yeah. changing the route. Um, lane changes, especially in this time, feels a little bit more natural, right? Um, mm -hmm. Those people that are in hospitality or those people that are in events, you know, you take your skills, you kind of move them to digital, you move them onto online. But for people who are like teachers um, and they're thinking right. about completely leaving the industry, that's a little bit mm -hmm. tougher. So in, right. that, in that vein, you know, for those people who are making those big pivots, what do you, what is your advice to them? I know that you have three things that you think people should know. Um, yeah. How do you start? So the first is, and I think this is the most important thing to start with, if nothing else, is knowing what you're leaving and why. And this is key because so often people are reactive. Just like you said, like, I just got to get out of here. I want to I wanna do something completely different. But oftentimes when you don't know what you're leaving, you end up recreating the exact same thing that you're leaving because you haven't tuned into that at all. You haven't checked in with yourself to see what hurts about this situation right now. So for my clients that want to make this shift, um, and urgently, you know, usually it's a very urgent, like, I got to do this. Um, I really ask people to stop for a moment and let's examine what are the things that are frustrating about where you are, what's annoying, what really stresses you out, um, what's incredibly overwhelming or even angering. You know, there are some things that just really kind of like get your, get your goat, right? So let's tune into that. What is it exactly that you're leaving? What's that pain that you're trying to um, escape, so to speak, uh, so that you don't recreate that in the next role, whatever that is, whether it's a highway change or a lane change? Um, oh, were you going to say something? No. no. Okay. So the second step that I ask people to consider next after they've tuned in and really kind of um, built their foundation, right, is looking at what is the target that they're aiming for. And often what I find is that when people want to shift, one of the reasons they haven't up to this point is because the idea of figuring out what's next is incredibly daunting. You know, it's overwhelming when you start thinking about, but I don't know what I want to do next. And often you just continue into that cycle where it's like, I need a change, but I don't know what, but I need a change, but I don't know what to do next. And so to get out of that cycle, even if you don't know what that next step is, let's talk about how you want to feel in that next role. When you get out of bed in the morning, you know, it's highly likely that wherever you are right now, the feeling that you get when you get out of bed is, oh, God, you know, like, I just, I can't today. And you're thinking about all the ways that you can go in late or leave early, or maybe I can take a mental health day, or maybe today I can be sick. So you're wanting to leave that emotion. You're wanting to leave that mindset. So what is it, if you don't know exactly what that next situation is, how do you want to feel when you get up in the morning? Um, what are the types of people that you want to be surrounded with? Or maybe you don't want to be surrounded with people. There are some people that work really well with being in solo or at least very small working situations. Or perhaps you really thrive in a larger, faster-paced environment. Or maybe you want to be in a smaller, um, smaller team, smaller company. But it's, it's important to get clear on some of those um, you know, kind of halo paths around the thing that you want to be doing. Because when you can identify that, then 
that could be the thing that cues you to at least a direction that you want to start going in if you don't know exactly what that thing is you want to, what you want to do. But I will say the thing about this is also be clear on what it is that you want to be doing versus what you don't want to be doing. That can also be the thing that directs you to a pivot path, whatever that is. Um, and then the third step that I ask people to do, and, and you talked about this, which I was tempted to start with this, Tiffy Lane, but sometimes when we're thinking about making a pivot, so as you said, like if you're a teacher and you're thinking of doing something uh, completely different, the automatic response is, well, I don't have the skills for that. I don't, I don't, I don't have the qualifications that they're calling for, calling for in the job description. But if you can take a closer look, kind of put it under the microscope, and identify your zones of brilliance right now. What are the skills? What are the strengths? What gifts do you have? Um, what are the hard skills that you have? What are the soft skills that you have? You know, soft skills are the things that, you know, just come to people naturally. There are some people that are just naturally very good leaders. Other people need training on it. They need, um, you know, support in that area. So getting clear on what capabilities are in your toolkit right at this moment, then looking at the thing that you want to move to, start doing a compare and contrast. And this is the thing that helps you to identify what the gaps are so that you can put together a plan to close those gaps. So if it's additional licensing that you need or another degree or a more robust training or certification, if you know what the pivot point requires, and you look at, compare and contrast it with what you have already, and then you know the net of that, then you can start putting together a plan or identifying who can help you to start closing those gaps. So to recap, number one, know what you're leaving and why. Don't just jump without having done that exploration. Number two, be clear about what that next thing looks like. What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? Where does it, where does it exist? And I like, what um, you said, I like, I also like what you said here about knowing what you don't like. Yes. Yes. And sometimes that's even more important than knowing what you do like, because so often, and this is the thing about skills, there can be skills that you're really good at, but maybe you don't want to be doing day in and day out. That's, that's a real thing. That is a very real thing. So knowing that is really half, maybe even three quarters of the battle right now is what do I not want to be doing during my days or in this next thing that I jump to? And number three is compare and contrast. Take an inventory of what you already know, what you're already good at and you enjoy doing, and then look at what you're trying to jump to, what that requires, and then look at what the gap is in between so that you can start putting together a plan to close the gap. I love it, Kia. I love it. And when you break it down in these three steps, it feels more approachable. It feels like you could actually bite it off and, yes. and chew on it. And yes. I think that this is yes. a, a really appropriate time as we head into fall, into the holidays, mm -hmm. and we're about what brings them joy and you know how they want to spend their year next year right. and what values are right. important to them. Um, yeah. How, if people need more help, if they need mm -hmm. more coaching, more group coaching, more individual coaching, I'm not sure kind of how you, if you do classes or if you do independent, how can they find you? Website, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of the above? All of the above. My, and everything, uh, it, with the exception of LinkedIn, my website and Instagram is Kia Myers Dugan. And then my LinkedIn is just KM Dugan. Um, just search for me and you can find me and I would love to support. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching mostly. I have a group coaching program that's in the works. I haven't, you know, fine tuned that yet, um, but that's coming. But at the very least, happy to have a conversation to talk 
about um, breaking this down because that's really, that's the secret is not taking big things and trying to take action on everything. It's so important to break it down and back into it. That's how we start, you know, to eat a whale, right? You can't, yep. you can't eat it all at once. It's just it got to be one thing at a time. Yep. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, Thank I really you. appreciate everyone that attended today. Um, I'll post it on YouTube. And again, if anyone has questions, please reach out to Kia. She's amazing. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Elaine. I was glad to be here. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.